Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is protecting Azure Logic Apps using private endpoints. Let's go. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about why this content is important. So, number one, you might be asking yourself, what is a private endpoint? Well, simply put, a private endpoint allows for connectivity to a pass service from within a customer's VNet. So, for example, when you have Logic Apps, you have a trigger that by default is exposed over the public internet. There's some customers that want to be able to protect that endpoint to ensure that traffic that is being sent to that specific logic app is, is happening or occurring through the VNet that they may have other services deployed into it. Now, logic apps isn't the only service to have this capability. There's others like SQL Database, Cosmos DB, storage and more that provides similar capabilities itself. Now, as I mentioned before, what's important about this is that a private endpoint will limit, limit traffic where it originates from when trying to connect. So if you are part of the same VNet where that private endpoint is deployed in, then you'll be able to communicate with Logic Apps in this case. And more specifically, when I say Logic Apps, for the purposes of this video, we're talking about Logic Apps Single Tenant, aka Standard SKU. This doesn't apply to the consumption-based model. Now, in our case, we're going to have a VNet, and I'm going to deploy a virtual machine inside of a VNet. And so as I go through the demo and sort of prove this out, we're going to try to make requests from outside of the VNet, so off of my laptop. Those are going to fail when I go ahead and make requests from inside of the VNet, like a virtual machine those will succeed. That's the whole point of it from, from this perspective. Now, this isn't the only sort of approach to limit where HTTP requests are coming from. I talked about this before in terms of like securing with Azure AD. Now, that is, you know, not going to provide protection from, say, a network perspective, but it's going to provide authentication. And so organizations are going to have different sort of policies or standards around this. This is another option. You know, one that we're not going to talk about today is obviously Azure API Management. Like it provides proxy-like functionality as well. That's another option that you can go ahead and employ uh, in order to go ahead and prevent, you know, restricted access or prevent authorized access to your HTTP endpoint or really restrict who can go ahead and call that endpoint. All right, just to illustrate how this works. So what we have here is Azure Pass. So we go ahead, we deploy an instance of Azure Logic Apps standard. Then what we're able to do is from the Logic Apps experience, go ahead and deploy a private link, a private endpoint. And what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to create essentially a private IP that will exist inside of the VNet. And then what it'll do is it'll turn off all other external access to our Logic App, in this case, our HTTP endpoint. And so what it essentially becomes is a situation where all of our traffic in our VNet will route through this private endpoint and then land in our Logic App itself. And so this is kind of the purpose of this. Now, what happens here is there could be some unattended consequences. So you might have some scenarios where you legitimately want Logic App standard to be exposed. You want to expose an HTTP endpoint and you want to accept traffic from outside this specific VNet. Now, the beauty of standard or, or single tenant logic apps is that you can go ahead and deploy an instance of a standard that you know, will service just a specific workload or a specific use case itself. And instead of like dealing with ICE, where it's like all or nothing, uh, that's what this granularity allows us to do. But Hopefully this illustrates exactly what we're trying to do, just limit requests to occur from just within our VNet when we want to talk to our specific logic app. Okay, so just to illustrate uh, the kind of the scenario that I'm building out here. So very simple logic app. I've got an HTTP request. I just go ahead, I provide a query. I'm just selecting a bunch of work orders and then I go ahead and send a response back. So quite simple. Now, before I implemented the private endpoint, uh, I could go ahead and I could call this from my logic app, or sorry, from my local uh, laptop, as, as you would expect it, because this endpoint here is publicly accessible. And so, so that does work. 
But what ends up happening, and so at this point in time, I do have the private endpoint already configured and working. Now I am on my local laptop. If I try to go ahead and make that same request, I'm actually going to get a failure. I'm going to get web app unavailable and basically it's forbidden. My attempt to reach the endpoint has been blocked. And so this would be as expected because this local laptop that I'm using right now isn't part of the VNet that the private endpoint belongs to. And so that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna go ahead and get that all set up. And I'll show you how to go ahead and do that. But what ends up happening, and so at this point in time, I do have the private endpoint already configured and working. Now I am on my local laptop. If I try to go ahead and make that same request, I'm actually gonna get a failure. I'm gonna get web app unavailable. And basically it's forbidden. My attempt to reach the endpoint has been blocked. And so this would be as expected because this local laptop that I'm using right now isn't part of the VNet that the private endpoint belongs to. And so that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna go ahead and get that all set up. And I'll show you how to go ahead and do that. Okay, so how do we go ahead and install or configure private endpoints? Uh, so what we'll do is go to the Azure portal, then find our Logic App Standard instance. Then we can go ahead and click on the networking tab. When we do that, we get a, it's a, actually a really good diagram. I really like this. So we can see what are our options when it comes to like inbound traffic and how we can manage access to incoming services. Then we can see what is the domain name of that or the URL that's uh, available for this instance. And then we talk about how we can go ahead and restrict outbound traffic. And so, you know, things like hybrid connections and VNet integration, these are, are essentially opportunities to yet leverage those networking infrastructures concepts in order to you know connect to other endpoints itself. We'll also see what are the outbound IP addresses that our instance is using. One thing to call out is we will, you know, at this point see an inbound address. This is a public address that is used whenever we go ahead and make calls to our Logic App instance itself. As we enable private endpoints, we're going to see that this is going to change and this is fundamentally going to have a big impact on how we go about, you know, accepting requests to our Logic App. Now, one thing we need to do before we get started is that we do need to have a VNet. Now, depending upon kind of your scenario, if you're just doing this kind of in a lab environment or on your own, uh, you're probably going to need to go ahead and create a VNet. If you are sort of working inside of a you know, large company, you will likely have VNets already established inside of your, uh, your Azure tenant. And so I think the big thing here is just to you know, figure out where you want to create that, logic, that VNet, right, what region, and then also where do you want to host it, like from a resource group perspective itself. So I just went ahead, I created a new resource group, I went ahead and provided a, a useful name for this specific VNet and the region that I'm interested in hosting it in. Uh, the one thing is when you do create the virtual network, and by no means am I considering myself a, a networking expert, but um, I did go ahead and include the default subnet. And uh, as a result, the default subnet address range. Mileage may vary here, especially if you're working in a large company. There might be some requirements. Talk to your network team. Uh, they may have some, you know, specific things that they want to address. But uh, this is what I used in terms of, you know, creating it in essentially my lab. Once I've got a VNet in place, I can come back to Logic Apps. I can go ahead and click on private endpoints and go ahead and configure my private endpoint itself. So when you do so, you're going to see a screen similar to this. You'll go ahead, you'll click on the add button. Then you need to go ahead and provide essentially a name for your private endpoint, uh, the subscription that it's gonna be in, then the VNet that you just created in say the previous step and the subnet. Now for me, 
there was a subnet, that default subnet that I talked about, I just went ahead and leveraged that. In addition, um, I did want to integrate with the private DNS zone. We're going to see this a little bit later. This has to do with um, our private IP address that uh, is going to be made available for us. So I did go ahead and enable that, select, set it to, to yes, and then I can go ahead and click on OK. When I go ahead and do so, now there's a few things that are, are interesting when I come back to the screen. So number one, we can see private endpoints are on. Number two, we have an inbound IP address. Now, what's going to happen is this is a local address in my VNet. So back to that original diagram that we talked about, our private endpoint is going to have a private IP in the VNet that we just selected. And that's why understanding your VNets is pretty important, uh, especially if you're working for a larger company. Uh, there's going to be certain VNets that uh, are going to be, you know, meant for this communication, then there's going to be some that aren't. Now, the other thing that's super important here, uh, this warning or this information message, when you enable private endpoints, other traffic features are no longer applicable and will be turned off. And so this is why I can't go to Postman on my local laptop and call this URL. I, I essentially get blocked. And this is why we basically turned off the external inbound traffic for our logic app. And as a result, we will only be able to use local traffic from our VNet itself. So hopefully that uh, explains how that all works. Now, when you go ahead and complete that task that we just did, within the resource group that you specified, this is where you're gonna go ahead and see, uh, you know, a few different, you know, components being deployed. So we've got the private DNS zone, we've got our private endpoint and then we've also got our, our NIC, our network interface and so these are the three components that you should expect to go ahead and see um, inside of the resource group for your private endpoint and so if I go ahead and run a test you've seen this already live but I get this error now one thing that I do need to do uh, in order to make this work even inside the VNet is we do need to go ahead and update that private DNS zone. And so what we want to do here is you can kind of think of this as DNS, right? So for our specific private link, we want to be able to resolve it to our private IP address. And so this is that same private IP address that we saw earlier on that Logic App screen. Uh, we'll go ahead, we can provide this with, with a name, uh, our private link, essentially we're adding a record here. And what we'll do is we can leave the defaults for the type and the time to live, and then just go ahead and put in your private IP address, hit OK. And what that'll do is that'll add a new record, uh, essentially to this table itself, which will help us with resolving to that private IP address itself. So that's a, a pretty important step that you're, you're not gonna wanna miss. Now, another thing that we need to do is, and this kind of depends, once again, are you working in a lab environment like myself, or are you working in, you know, a, a proper sort of enterprise environment where you've got a networking team and you've got DNS records, you know, that are being managed um, properly inside of your organization. So when I went and I logged on to my VM that's deployed inside of the same VNet, what ended up happening was that I was still getting failures and I was like, what the heck is going on? And so the reason for this is that machine that's connected inside of Azure, that's just running like in my own subscription. There's no domain controllers that are being used. As a result, there's no DNS that's being managed. And so in order for me to basically route this properly, I went ahead and updated my hosts file, which is found in C window system 32 drivers ETC. And I went ahead and included my Logic App standard uh, URL and basically I mapped that to my private IP. And so what this will do is when I go ahead and use this URL, it will go ahead and route this down to this private IP address itself. And so naturally, if you have proper DNS, you won't have to go ahead and, and do that. 
So what I can do now is I can go ahead and test this inside of my virtual machine. Okay, so here now I'm on a virtual machine. This virtual machine is um, has been deployed to that specific VNet. And so this does have a local IP address, a private IP address that is in that similar range of that 10.2. Now, if I go ahead and you know call this from Postman, it will basically be able to route to the appropriate endpoint and we'll get our response back from our logic app. And so this is kind of the sort of the proof. Um, this is kind of the desired outcome if you're using private endpoints is that you're restricting how people are communicating and accessing your endpoint. Now, I still have a, you know, a URL that looks to be public, um, but once again, it's being restricted. And if you try to go ahead and call this from outside the VNet, it's going to fail. If you go ahead and call this from inside the VNet, then you're good. All right, so that concludes today's video. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, I think private endpoints are, are definitely something that you should be aware of. And I think it's really situational in terms of when you would want to implement it. But like I said before, I think the good news is with the single tenant model of, of Logic App Standard, uh, it does give us some optionality just in terms of when we want to do that. Like, so perhaps you might have some specific use cases where, you know, there's specific requirements about it not leaving like a local network or a private network. And you could use it um, you know, in that manner without, um, you know, running into the risk of, you know, having someone expose that, uh, that endpoint. And even if someone did grab your SAS key, or your SAS token and your URL, um, if they're not local to your network, that won't be any good to them. And I think we've seen that as part of the demo itself. So it is a, a good tool. I think you have to balance it with like API management and what you want to do there, or even the uh, ability to uh, restrict Azure AD. Um, now that would be more on the consumption side, so maybe in the interim this provides a good option for standard in terms of how you want to restrict uh, traffic and who can access your endpoint. So that concludes this video. Uh, look forward to uh, more Logic Apps content on the channel. Uh, if you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. And uh, you're obviously on YouTube, so like, subscribe, comments, always welcome. Thanks, and we'll see you again soon.